Fullback Tyler Klutz has spent six years in the NFL, including parts of uh, three seasons with the Dallas Cowboys. He's here tonight to discuss what's going on with his former team. And uh, first, let's ask what's going on in your career. Are you a man looking for a team right now? Yeah, still waiting on an opportunity, but uh, being 31 years old and playing a position that's somewhat dying in the league, uh, we have the opportunity to be a little bit particular about what opportunity we take. So uh, looking for the right opportunity, but um, feeling really good where we're at. And uh, if we're meant to play some more ball, I'm ready. If not, time to move on. It's good to have options, That's isn't right. it? It's that good to have right. options. And uh, for now, Tyler's hosting a TV show that will uh, air during this football season, and we'll have mm -hmm. details on that coming up in a minute. Let's start with the Romo uh, injury. You told me earlier you didn't see it live, but you saw mm -hmm. it the second you got home and, yeah. and had, had recorded. What went through your mind as you saw Tony go down uh, by, uh, at the hands of Cliff Averill against the Seahawks yeah, yeah. the other night? Uh, I mean, immediately my heart broke. Tony is as competitive a man as I've been around. And he wants to win more than anyone. And for him to go down like that on the third play of the game, getting ready to slide, being doing the, uh, the smart thing for a quarterback uh, to get hurt like that and, and re-aggravate aggravate something that he's, uh, he's been dealing with for a little bit, my heart broke for him. I know that this year he had big expectations for himself, high standards. And uh, unfortunately, that's going to be postponed a little bit. But Tony is a warrior. Um, 2014, I think, showed everybody what he's capable of doing. Um, you know, he fought through a broken back in 2013. Uh, he's going to be on the field as soon as he's healthy, and he's going to be a, as effective as ever. Yeah, you had a chance to talk to him. His, mm -hmm. his attitude is one that, uh, of optimism regarding mm -hmm. coming Absolutely. back Absolutely, yeah, there's no question. He's ready to get back up. Um, obviously, right now it hurts. You know, I think physically, emotionally, he's just in pain right now, and um, I think that uh, he's going to pick himself up like he always does. He's going to be back. He's going to mentor Dak and get him ready to go and make sure that uh, when he comes back that the team is in as good a situation as it can be in. Dak Prescott is is the man for now, uh, the Cowboys starting quarterback, uh, the rookie who's looked really good in, in, yeah. in the preseason. Mm -hmm. As you've watched him, have you been surprised at the way this guy's performed here? Well, I think you turn on ESPN, you turn on NFL Network, it doesn't matter. Everybody's going to be talking about Dak Prescott right now and what he's done, and, and it's impressive. But it's the little things that have impressed me, the way he manages two-minute drives. He has tons of composure. Scott Linehan said it uh, over and over, nothing rattles him. Um, that's something that rookies don't have. When you get thrown in the fire like that, a lot of times uh, guys freeze up, uh, don't make the right reads. But you see him going through progressions, and when a quarterback checks it down to his back, that shows poise and that shows confidence. And, and he's doing a great job right now. Um, obviously connecting with, uh, with Jason Witten on that touchdown against Seattle. I mean, trusting his guys. He's got probably the best backfield in the league right now with Ezekiel Elliott, Alfred Morris, Lance Dunbar coming back, uh, Darren McFadden coming back. I mean, that is a power, powerful, powerful backfield. And if he relies on those guys, Jason Witten, that offensive line, he's going to be just fine. Is it possible, though, for a young quarterback to understand how much different the preseason is from the regular season until you're out there? Or how much different is it? Yeah, there is a big difference between ones and twos. But I think seeing Seattle and seeing that, that caliber of defense and what he was able to do, move the offense down the field and put a score uh, on the board, that, that was impressive because that's as hard as it's going to get. R having the, the live rush, Michael Bennett, Cliff Averill rushing at you live, um, that is as hard as it gets in this league. And I mean, you asked Tony, 2014, that was as tough of a game as we've played in in a long time. And for him to uh, be as successful moving the chains as he was, I mean, I, I th he's not ready. He's, he's a rookie still. He's got a, a ways to go, and he'll, he'll be the first one to tell you that. But uh, I think that as a rookie, fourth-round pick, uh, for to do what he's doing right now, that's really, really impressive. Talk about Ezekiel Elliott. You were instrumental in 2014 mm -hmm. in helping DeMarco Murray set the franchise single season rushing record. Zeke did show something mm -hmm. the other night against Seattle, that's, mm -hmm. that's for sure. J just your take on the kind of physicality this kid shows right out of the gate. Yeah, there's no question. To take it to a player like Cam New, uh, excuse me, uh, Chancellor. Yeah. Cam Chancellor, excuse me. Uh, I mean, I'll, you go back and watch 2014, that guy brought the wood on us. And uh, for him to take it to him and be as physical and be as confident after the play, uh, in between plays, he was not scared of him. So that's, that's something that's really good as a, as a rookie back. You've got that offensive line in front of you that can open up holes. You've got Jason Go Witten, one of the best blocking tight ends in the Middle league. Uh, I mean, guys like Jeff Swaim are really stepping up at tight end in the absence of James Hanna. Uh, there's a lot of weapons around him and, and his confidence and his ability. It's, he's going to do some big things. Unfair question, but can he duplicate the type of season Murray had with your help and others in 14? 
Uh, he's got the tools in place. He's got uh, the support around him. Healthy Dez, healthy Terrence, healthy Beasley. Um, I think that uh, he's got the tools now. It's a matter of staying level-headed and just pushing forward and doing what you're asked to do. And he's done some great things in pass protection. He's he's done some really unrookie like things in a good way. He's uh, he's been able to pick up blitzes, scanning across the formation. He's done a lot of things that have shown his maturity as a player, and I think that uh, he's going to have a successful run. But he's got a great supporting cast with him in Alfred Morris, McFadden, and Dunbar. You got to stay out of the, the weed shops, even in legal states too, right? <laughs> uh, got to yeah. know where you are now, yeah, right? We're not going to hit, hit that. Yeah, <laughs> got to be a professional. I'll just say that. Uh, even if Romo were totally healthy, concerns mm -hmm. about this team's ability to stop anybody else uh, mm -hmm. are, are out there. Is there anything that gives you faith that this Dallas defense might at least be competent enough to, to keep them in football games? Uh, yeah, two words, Sean Lee. Uh, that guy is uh, the captain of that defense. You, you stand out in practice, you listen. You don't even have to watch practice. You can listen to practice and you hear how competitive Sean is, how smart he is. He's talking through plays. He's talking to himself after the plays, talking to other guys, getting guys in the right positions. He, uh, he is the leader of that D. And you saw in the Seattle game, I think I counted eight plays in a row that he was in on a tackle. Um, either solo or assist, and uh, he is going to be the glue that holds that defense together. I think if we can stop the run and force teams into passing situations, uh, Rod Marinelli is going to get that defensive line ready to go and uh, come in at those quarterbacks with their hair on fire. Let me ask you about Jason Garrett. You've been around him for a few years now, coming off mm -hmm. a four and twelve year. Jerry Jones clearly still has confidence mm -hmm. in him. Do you think the players in that locker room? still buying what, what Jason Garrett's selling at this point? Yeah, there's no doubt. He is a player's coach, and the guys in that locker room believe wholeheartedly in him. And the guys know that Coach Garrett has their back and that he's going to do everything in the best, best interest of the team. And when you have the trust of the team, guys are going to follow you. And he has that. He's been a player. He knows what it's like. He knows what it's like to be successful, and he knows what it's like to have rough years as well as a player. So he gets it. Um, you know, I think the, the relationship that he has with Jason Witten and Tony Romo, um, I think speaks volumes. Those guys believe in him. Those guys are as, as pro of a pro as you can be. And uh, I, I know that that locker room's behind him. Now it's just gotta, he's gotta pick these guys up and, and, and remind them that this team's about more than one person. And we got a lot of pieces that, that can really be put together to make something great. Let's talk about your TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the first one will mm -hmm. will uh, tape on uh, Monday night uh, at 7:30, September 12th, at the House of Blues yep. in Dallas, and uh, it's inside the huddle, airing for a 25th straight season. Yep. And you and at times your wife are hosting yeah. this year. Tell us about it. Yeah, we're really excited. We're going into our 25th year. Uh, Ray Salinas started this a long time ago, and uh, we're really excited. We're going to incorporate some of the former hosts. Um, bring them back. We got some legendary cowboys that have been on this show. We're going to bring them back, get them involved. But we're really excited about the segment that we're doing with my wife, Tiffany. She's uh, going to be going into the homes uh, of wives of the players and really show that the strength of an NFL player uh, is highly, highly supported by the woman that's behind him. And they do some great things. And I don't think that they've uh, been given the credit that they have been due uh, with shows like NFL Wags and um, Basketball Wives. They really give a negative light on what professional athletes' wives go through. Um, they're the glue that holds the family together and uh, allows us to do what we can do. And we really just want to shed the light on a lot of the great things that they're doing in the community, uh, in, their, in their household, and, and really in the professional realm. There's a lot of things that wives are doing um, professionally in business that, that a lot of people might be surprised by. All right, it's Inside the Huddle with Tyler Klutz. Uh, check your local listings for that and head out to the House of Blues to uh, watch one of the shows in person. Great to have you in tonight. Yeah, thanks. thanks for having me. Appreciate it.